Hello everyone. In this video, we'll talk about the impedance matching. Impedance is expressed as amount of sound energy lost when the sound passes in a medium. Impedance in a medium depends on the acoustic resistance of the medium, which in turn depends on the density and elasticity of the medium. Density changes, acoustic resistance of the medium changes, and impedance in a medium will also change. Now, coming to the sound transmission and its relation to impedance, we know in the ear, sound is conducted from the external ear to the middle ear and then to the inner ear. The sound is conducted from the air-filled middle ear to the fluid-filled inner ear and the external and the middle ear contains air, whereas the inner ear contains the fluids. The acoustic resistances of the two media, therefore, widely differ that is, their impedances do not match and acoustic resistance of the fluid is much more than that of the air. So the effective transfer of sound energy from an air to a fluid medium is difficult because most of the sound waves will be reflected back due to the different mechanical properties of the two media. There is impedance mismatching. About 30 decibel sound is lost from the air. Therefore, greater pressure of sound waves is required to produce vibrations of the fluid in the inner ear. And the middle ear acts as an impedance matching device or it functions as an impedance matching device. And uh, it amplifies the pressure of the sound waves which it transmits so that the inner ear can be stimulated in spite of its higher impedance. This is called as impedance matching. The middle ear matches the impedance of the inner ear to that of the external ear. The impedance mismatching is mostly compensated by the middle ear by increasing the sound pressure of about uh, 34 decibels. And this is accomplished by three mechanisms. The first mechanism is the change in the surface area of the tympanic membrane and the stapes. The surface area of the tympanic membrane is 50 square millimeter and that of the oval window is 3 mm square. So the area is reduced by 17 times. There exists a size difference, and the size difference means the force produced by the sound is concentrated at a smaller area. And this will amplify the pressure exerted at the smaller area, and in this case, it is the oval window. As we know, force is pressure times area, so the sound, when it impinges on the tympanic membrane with a given force, it is transmitted to the stapes uh, at, the, uh, at the foot plate of the stapes because the area is smaller. For the same force, the pressure is much higher at, as the area is smaller. So the same force is applied by the sound wave force per unit area. The pressure is increased by 17 times at the foot plate of the stapes at the oval window because the area is reduced by 17 times. This area difference or the size difference leads to increase in the pressure at the oval window by about plus 26 decibels. The second mechanism involved is the ossicles lever system and the lever mechanism by the bony ossicles. The ossicles act as a lever system and this lever increases the pressure at the foot plate of the stapes. The handle of malleus is 1.3 times longer than the long process of the incus. And this uh, length difference is going to provide a mechanical leverage action. Leverage means exertion of force by means of a lever. The incus being uh, smaller in length is displaced less than the malleus but with a greater force. The stapes is displaced much less than the tympanic membrane, but with a greater force. The leverage action increases the sound pressure that arrives at the oval window 1.3 times, and that approximates around plus 2 decibels. The third mechanism is the curved membrane mechanism, and this uh, is going to also increase the sound pressure at the oval window. The tympanic membrane is rigidly fixed near its rim and it hangs loosely like a tent. So you can see the sound causes movements of the tympanic membrane at the periphery more than at the center where the handle of malleus is attached. 
the displacement at the center being less, the force with which the malleus moves is correspondingly greater and this amplifies the force. So the curved membrane mechanism amplifies the force of the impinging sound by about plus six decibels. The reduction in the surface area of the tympanic membrane and the oval window and the leverage mechanism of the ossicles both together will increase the pressure applied on the oval window by 22 times in the middle ear. 17 times by the surface area difference and 1.3 is the ossicular liver system. So total 22 times increase in the pressure. So the total increase in the pressure at the foot plate of the stapes is 22 times and also by the curved membrane mechanism the increase is sufficient to overcome the impedance of the fluid to cause the vibration in the fluid of the inner ear. So 26 decibels by the surface area difference, 2 decibels dif is by the ossicle leverage mechanism and 6 decibels uh, increase in the pressure is by the curved membrane mechanism. So a total increase in the pressure would be around or approximately 34 decibels. So the tympanic membrane and the ossicular system provides impedance matching between the middle ear and the inner ear and it is about 50 to 75 percent of the sound frequency between 300 to 3000 cycles per second. If the tympanic membrane and the ossicles are damaged, sound waves can still travel to the inner ear at the oval window but the sensitivity of the hearing is decreased by about 15 to 20 decibels. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel Simple Concepts in Medical Physiology for more videos.